Harold, uh, welcome to the Cloud Native uh, Special Interest Group meeting. Today is uh, May 90th, and actually we reconvene after one year break in uh, Special Interest Group meetings. So it's great uh, to see so many people on the call, and hopefully we will have even more participants um, um, in the next meetings. So the today's agenda is to actually discuss how we started a special interest group, uh, how do we establish uh, regular meetings, and just to have introductions. Um, and uh, the, another topic I put uh, to the agenda is about Jenkins Kubernetes Operator. So last week we had a great online meetup by Tomas, and we could use uh, this um, venue to discuss what uh, could we do to help Jenkins Kubernetes Operator project and uh, how we could um, adopt uh, more features uh, there and how we could uh, deliver changes in upstream. Okay, so regarding the Google Doc, um, how we usually handle it. Um, okay, so we have a Gitter chat and in this Gitter chat, we basically post meeting link and uh, meeting notes uh, every meeting. So you can go here and uh, find uh, the Google Doc here. And also I'll uh, just I'll post it in the, in the Zoom chat. Oh, thanks, Sumit. Okay, but yeah, we have a chat uh, where we can have uh, all these discussions if needed. So, um, uh, how we usually organize the meetings? Uh, we have a running Google Doc where we make meeting notes and uh, everyone is welcome to participate so uh, this document should be open for comments if you want to add something just uh, put it there um, and i think we could just begin uh, since we have uh, a lot of uh, participants uh, on the call uh, my suggestion would be to just have uh, quick introductions and after that basically the common agenda uh, who would like to go first? I can go. Okay. So uh, this is Mark Key, uh, not a CDF Jenkins Zoom. <laughs> Everybody for the CDF uh, Zoom, that, that uh, that's actually me. My name is Mark Key. I am uh, I'm one of the Jenkins core maintainers, uh, as well as Summer of Code org admin and, and lead of a, uh, the pipeline authoring SIG. Uh, I am also a a uh, member of the Kubernetes org, as, as well as one of the release managers for all the versions that get released. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for bringing this back into the forefront, Oleg, and welcome, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I could also do a quick introduction then. So yeah, my name is Oleg Minashev. I am one of uh, Jenkins core maintainers. I'm also a uh, I'm a Jenkins board member and a leader of uh, a few special interest groups. One of them is Platform Special Interest Group. And uh, when uh, Cloud Native SIG was running in the previous iteration, I was uh, helping to organize the meetings, etc. And I'm really happy uh, to see this uh, special interest group back because uh, for Jenkins being uh, uh, friendly to users uh, running in the cloud is really important. And uh, this uh, meeting and uh, this venue is a great opportunity to discuss challenges, coordinate projects, and see how we could uh, help each other and uh, Jenkins users who run on Kubernetes or in other cloud platforms. So uh, nice to see all of you here. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, hi all, uh, I'm Sumit. Uh, I am uh, actually working on one of the GSOC projects, which is the external fingerprint storage, and Oleg is my mentor, uh, along with Andre and Mike. Uh, so that would be one of the founding projects, I think, for uh, external for this SIG, uh, the external fingerprint storage project. So happy to see you all, and I'll keep you updated on my progress on that project. Thank you. Akram, sorry for the previous introduction. That's okay. Uh, so my name is Akram Benaisi. I'm working for Red Hat. I'm uh, the maintainer uh, with uh, Shawed and Bivhav of the Jenkins images for OpenShift and uh, also the, the maintainer for the three plugins that we have for OpenShift, uh, uh, for Jenkins on OpenShift. 
and a contributor on the Jenkins operator, uh, which is the topic for uh, this call now. Thank you. Yep. So hi all. I'm uh, Sladen. Um, I've been con active Jenkins contributor. Um, I've worked with Jenkins in the past with the Jenkins Community Bridge project, and I'm also uh, um, for a student for the Google Summer of Code um, with the Jenkins Custom Distribution Service. Um, yeah. So I'm really excited to be part of this special interest group and help in whatever way possible. So thanks everyone for being here, and yeah, we'd like to uh, move this group forward. Thank you. So I can go next, maybe. No, I'm Jared. I'm from Red Hat too. Um, I think Akram said almost everything about uh, what we are doing in Red Hat and related to Jenkins. So yeah, we are happy to see this community growing a bit, both around the the operator. We we start a bit working on it on our side. So happy to to join. Okay, so I can go next. Uh, so this is uh, Vibhav. I work with Akram and uh, uh, Javed on, on the Jenkins uh, on OpenShift and the plugins. And uh, I also contribute to the operator with them. And uh, on the side, I also contribute to Helen and Techron from side to side. So uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. And hello, uh, I'm Tomas from Virtus Lab, and I'm basically the guy behind the uh, Jenkins Kubernetes operator. Okay, uh, thank you. So yeah, we have uh, a lot of people uh, who work on uh, Kubernetes operator, and yeah, this is great. So thanks uh, a lot for joining the meeting. Um, I know that uh, Kubernetes operator has its own meeting, uh, but yeah, right now we have uh, a few conditions we need to resolve in our calendars. So it's great to have uh, this uh, additional uh, call. I'll uh, share my uh, screen again so we can see the agenda. Mm, and yeah, you can see that uh, there are some meeting notes and please feel free to add uh, something if anything is missing because yeah, it's basically a collaborative uh, document. Um, I'll quickly speak about uh, Cloud Native Seek 2.0, um, especially for those who didn't participate in the first edition. Uh, there is a thread in the developer uh, mailing list uh, about it. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll quickly summarize the status. Uh, the previous Seek, uh, when we started, it was built around uh, Jenkins architecture changes. So if you go here, you can see that uh, there are projects like pluggable storage, uh, also cloud native Jenkins, which uh, boil down to stateless Jenkins, Jenkins file runner and other such components. Then there is configuration as code and Jenkins Kubernetes operator, which was added uh, there. But at that moment, uh, the special interest group was already not that active. So although it's formally list listed here, I don't think that there were active discussions at the six venue at that point. So this is what we had um, in 2018, 2019. Uh, some projects uh, got a good progress. For example, if you go to pluggable storage, you can see that uh, uh, storage for artifacts, to some extent for logs was delivered. Also we submitted some other jobs and discussed changes in other areas. Uh, but yeah, at that uh, point uh, we didn't uh, go further. Same for Cloud Native Jenkins, we had Jenkins file runner and other components, uh, but uh, all is still under the development. Configuration as code evolved pretty well, but I would say that at the moment, configuration as code rather has its own special interest group. Um, it's registered as a sub project within Jenkins, uh, and uh, this sub project basically has its own meetings uh, every two weeks. Uh, the next meeting is tomorrow, by the way. Um, and yeah, it evolves pretty well. But again, uh, this project was quite detached from the special interest group. And we even had a discussion about moving it to platform special interest group uh, half a year ago. We didn't do the move, but yeah, I think that uh, in the current state, it rather deserves to be a special uh, seek. 
and Jenkins Kubernetes operator, yeah. Uh, yeah. People on the call uh, know the current state, I guess. We had a meetup uh, last week with uh, the summary. And uh, thanks to Tomas and all other contributors, uh, the project evolves actively. So it's great to see its evolution. Uh, a lot of changes are coming. Hopefully, they will be uh, the next release soon. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I tried uh, this project uh, last week and it works pretty well. So this is what was the scope of the previous SIG and uh, one of the problems why this SIG wasn't uh, that active as we would like uh, is, well, the first reason that it was hardly focused on the architecture changes. So pluggable storage, Jenkins file runners, uh, all of them presumed uh, major changes within Jenkins and it was quite difficult to find contributors who were interested in this area. So for new edition of the SIG, uh, my proposal was to switch more on um, uh, use cases for users and uh, to not necessarily be cloud native. Uh, and my proposal is to actually uh, focus on uh, making the SIG uh, cloud friendly and making Jenkins cloud friendly. You don't have to have the Jenkins itself cloud native to get benefits from running in the cloud and uh, 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 to get benefits from the uh, cloud native environments. At least uh, that's my approach and uh, I would be happy to discuss that. So what do you think about that? What do you think about uh, the scope of uh, interest for the special interest group? So, what I am a plus one. I'm sorry, I'm a plus one. Yeah. The same here. It does. It does make sense. Uh, but how will this? Uh, mm -hmm. Like you, you have mentioned integration with cloud native CI/CD engines like Tekton and Jenkins X. So how do you see this uh, uh, being implemented? Uh, yeah. So it's a good question. How it would be implemented? Mm, I can just uh, describe my personal vision. So Jenkins pipeline is basically an engine uh, within uh, Jenkins. And uh, even now we have multiple implementations of this engine. For example, uh, when you run with sandbox or without sandbox, effectively you have different pipeline engines under the hood executing of your, your pipeline. And uh, there is no blocker from making uh, these engines extensible. And for example, uh, making Tekton uh, runner a new engine. So for example, you would be able to run Tekton pipelines, but at the same time get all benefits from multi-branch pipeline and all the harness around uh, the core engine, which is available in Jenkins. Yeah, at least in theory. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think that's all the uh, support Tekton pipelines in Jenkins. In the back end, it runs Tekton as its uh, base pipeline on it. Um, sorry, I might have missed uh, the questions. Uh, uh, the question. yeah. like my question was like, does Jenkins X do that already? Uh, so uh, the current state is that uh, Jenkins X uh, is a separate project. So Jenkins X is a project under the umbrella of Continuous Delivery Foundation, actually same as Jenkins and Tekton. So if you go here, you can uh, find uh, that uh, there are uh, four integrated projects and one incubated. And all of them uh, have, well, basically they operate in the continuous integration and the continuous delivery space. Uh, moreover, there are some high level abstractions, for example, in, um, um, uh, CD Foundation, there is interoperability special interest group, which uh, specifically dedicated uh, to ensure that uh, CI/CD services can interact between each other. And for example, for this particular project, integrating with Tekton and Jenkins X could be a good subject for this SIG. Why I put it uh, to the uh, cloud native for six scope is because yeah, Tekton and Jenkins X are cloud native CI CD engines. So for me, it would be 
useful to have it in the scope. Uh, but yeah, full disclaimer that right now there is no real effort planned towards uh, this uh, direction. So if you have contributors, you would be working on that. If not, then not. That's yeah. So yeah, this one, yeah, maybe it's an aspirational goal. Uh, but yeah, I think that in principle it would be really beneficial to Jenkins users. And uh, yeah, for example, if you go to the Jenkins roadmap, uh, this is what we are currently building. So this roadmap is uh, a draft. But there is already a section for Jenkins on cloud platforms. And here, for example, we have Tron support as something in the future without no specific dates. And well, there is no dates there at all, but uh, right now uh, it's rather a subject for the discussion. But if you're interested to contribute to this project, I think it's something we could discuss at the SIG meetings for sure. Okay. Any other comments? I can't mute that line. I'm not sure who is it. Yeah, but everybody seems to be muted. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, if you are not recording, get muted. So, yeah, this is the scope. And again, uh, it's not something like we would be working on all these areas and discussing all these areas at once. It's a scope of interest. So depending on the meetings, on the schedule, we can uh, set up topics. So for example, today we discuss uh, uh, Jenkins uh, Kubernetes operator, which is here. Uh, next uh, meeting, we can take a look at another topic, for example, Jenkins file runner or Kubernetes plugin, and uh, go in that way. But uh, still, uh, the SIG could be a good umbrella for all these projects. I think this is a great idea. I like this, adding this into mm -hmm. the, to the scope. Mm hmm So, yeah, if you're fine with it, I'll probably, after the meeting, maybe later this week, submit a patch to this page, just to adjust uh, areas for improvements, scope of interest, maybe tweak the projects a bit. Uh, but yeah, I think that uh, it would be a good start to just start reworking this page. Uh, then the topic which is quite close to areas of interest is about funding projects. Uh, because yeah, as we already discussed, Tipton, uh, it would be a great initiative in principle, but uh, there is no ongoing work. But there, is, uh, there are some projects uh, which are currently ongoing and the uh, way we could uh, do some collaboration even now. And uh, uh, we could use SEEK in order to promote these projects, to help uh, finding contributors and uh, resolving obstacles in the Jenkins community. And uh, I started from preparing a list of projects which uh, are closely related and which are currently ongoing. So two topics, uh, uh, more or less no-brainers for me because they come from the previous uh, iteration of the SIG. So it's Jenkins Operator for Kubernetes and Jenkins File Runner. Uh, but yeah, there is a lot of other projects which we could discuss. And uh, yeah, so just uh, to quickly go through that, uh, if everyone is interested. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, the first project in the list I have um, is a project by Sumit about um, uh, external fingerprint storage. Uh, so we started um, it um, as a part of our GSOC effort. And uh, if you go to the Cloud Native Seek scope, there is a pluggable storage page. Uh, so yeah, there is a lot of uh, storage types and fingerprints is here. Why it's important? Because if you want to do CI CD, you likely want to have a kind of traceability and uh, observability of your artifacts inside Jenkins or outside Jenkins. And uh, if you move outside, especially if you want to build a system on the top of Jenkins, having uh, an external storage would be great. 
And uh, right now we have ongoing discussion how it would be implemented. Uh, and maybe Sumit, you would like to summarize what would be the current plan. Hi, so uh, basically under this project, uh, what we are targeting for is uh, first that uh, we are trying to move, uh, we are trying to add an extension point which can allow, uh, which can allow core to support external storages. Second, uh, that we are trying to build a reference implementation for uh, Redis uh, at the moment. Uh, and uh, third is that once we can do both these things is that we can actually trace these fingerprints across different Jenkins instances. So that is the core idea for our project. And uh, right now we are like in the first week of it. So as, as we go on and develop it, uh, we'll post more updates on this SIG. Would you, so like, do you have anything else in mind that I should be talking about? Or? Is that good? I think it's a good summary. Thank you. Thank you. So what's the opinion of other participants? Uh, do you need a pluggable storage? And if so, what's your opinion about this particular topic? Hey, can I ask you to develop uh, just the, what, what is it supposed to, to be in terms of usage? Just I, I'm reading right now the, uh, the mm -hmm. page about it. It's about tracking usage of uh, artifacts, credentials, files, and so on. What, what do we mean by track, tracking? Uh, so basically, it's uh, in Jenkins, so there is a database called fingerprint storage. Well, this is basically a bunch of uh, files on the file system right now. It's not a real database. Um, and uh, it posts uh, different metadata about uh, artifacts, and this metadata is extensible. So for example, you can trace Docker images, you can trace artifacts. And finally, it just uh, ends up uh, accessible to Jenkins users, to Jenkins jobs, so that uh, they can do something with this data. For example, you can trace usage of your artifact or of your image container across multiple jobs if needed, or within your delivery pipeline if you split it across multiple jobs. Okay, so let's try to give a simple example. Imagine mm -hmm. that I build like a simple Java web application and I reference some Maven artifacts in my Palm XML or something like that. The Jenkins pipeline will trigger at some point the build of my Java application. Will any of my uh, Maven artifacts, for example, will be referenced in this database? And would it be the same for anything that I build, every, every class, for example, that I build or compile? Uh, yeah, it really depends on the implementation. For artifacts, when you publish an artifact, it can be automatically added to the fingerprint database. And what it means, you have one job which builds your artifact, and another one which deploys it to a server, uh, for example, new release of your library, of your service, and then you can uh, trace this dependency. Or another use case, uh, let's say just uh, um, uh, staging, uh, so you can uh, pass uh, your artifacts through environments and uh, again trace usage, trace uh, build results within, uh, and test results within these environments and query this data within Jenkins so you can uh, quickly access what happened with this artifact. Okay, well, what is the fingerprint that is taken? Is it like a MD5 or SHA256 or something like that for every file? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'll probably dip, uh, dive to the code a bit. So in Jenkins, uh, there is a fingerprint class right inside Jenkins core. And this fingerprint class is basically an item which has um, ID, basically MD5 at the moment. And uh, it also has an extensible set of fingerprints. Uh, sorry, Facet. So Facet is basically uh, an extensible object in Jenkins and uh, any plugin, uh, any step can put additional information in the fingerprint. So you create an artifact, you have a unique ID, and then uh, any instance within Jenkins can put additional details there, uh, which can contribute to user interface, which can be easily queried in the future. And uh, yeah, this is basically the structure. So it's, it really allows to do everything as long as you have a unique ID. 
Okay. Do you have already an idea of what would be like the default implementation? I mean, what, uh, which kind of file will be tracking? Uh, just asking because of performance. So for example, let's say you have a very naive approach like, approach, like uh, I will track all the classes or all the things that I built during my pipeline. It will be a huge amount of CPU to just compute this for all the time. So uh, do you have any answer about this right now? Sumit, what do you think? Um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, just for example, for a simple web application, let's assume, for example, that I want to know that which any class of all my dependent uh, Maven jars, uh, I want to know which one I use. So I will like get every jar, extract it, get the MD5 for every class inside, and I will store it in Redis or in the file system or whatever. So this could be very time CPU consuming and probably even for bigger application, it will be storage consuming. Uh, so what will be the implementation for this? Will it be distributed? Will it be like uh, running inside of the pipeline? Will it be asynchronous or synchronous? Would it uh, add? Yeah, this, this kind of questions asking right now. So I'm just trying to understand maybe what kind of usage we, are, we have for this. But uh, yeah, I see a lot of data and, uh, and CPU cycles. Uh, but yeah, right now I don't know if, what kind of usage we can have. So uh, basically, uh, like from what I understand is that, uh, uh, so basically whenever we want to fingerprint a particular file, that is an extra build step that we do add uh, on our own. And uh, fingerprints by default, uh, like they are very uh, small in size. So they don't take a lot of space. Uh, I think Jesse ran some tests for those. Uh, and so, so I think, uh, in fact, uh, from the current implementation, uh, all these fingerprints are as it is in Jenkins home, right? So they're already, it's not a good way to be storing, uh, Jenkins because so, uh, so uh, fingerprints because, uh, so we are dependent on the storage disk of Jenkins home. So by taking it out of there into an external storage, it's like, I think that is an extra step that is much better. Uh, that is actually solving a problem and uh, as far as uh, i think the database goes like we can configure so it's more easy to configure the database uh, to you know have maybe replica sets or any other uh, such things that we would want so like maybe maybe i think i don't know if i answered your question or not but uh, that would be my take on that yep uh, i would also add to that uh the implementation is yet to be seen. Um, what we mostly target in the pluggable storage stories is offering extensibility APIs. So for example, what we did for Artifact Manager um, uh, two years ago, we created extensibility API. And then for example, um, the Microsoft Azure team, uh, they have experience with uh, working with Azure storages and they created a reference implementation uh, well, yeah, the implementation of the APIs for Asia. Same for AWS, etc. cetera. Uh, but uh, our main problem was to firstly provide architectural capability so that uh, users could do so. And to, to answer your specific use case, it really depends on uh, what uh, you run and how you index fingerprints. If you want to index every class in your file, you totally can do it in Jenkins, uh, but yeah, it comes at cost, uh, but the Jenkins won't index uh, the, it like that by default. So it's your educated choice as a user if you want to do that. We have Jason on the call. Yep. Hi. Hi. I'm just here to mm -hmm. see, if, see if there's anything I should add to, but probably not. Okay. So. Yeah, we spent some time on this uh, project. I suggest that we slowly move on and yeah, we could uh, have a special session at the next meeting about uh, the storage because yeah, it's an interesting topic and we could deep dive. And I guess it would be really interesting for Sumit uh, and uh, other participants in this project because we really seek for the feedback from users uh, so that we can uh, plan our work. 
So other projects uh, which we have on the list, one is Jenkins on Kubernetes. Uh, so just to explain the history, right now we have a lot of uh, uh, stories about running Jenkins on Kubernetes, but basically no documentation on uh, Jenkins IO at all. No solution pages, no guidelines, uh, nothing. And um, in the documentation seek, we identified it as a priority project. Um, and uh, we started from doing online meetups about Jenkins on Kubernetes, but we also want uh, to have some documentation, to have some solution pages uh, so that uh, we can share uh, this experience and uh, we want to integrate this knowledge and make it accessible in Jenkins. Obviously, expertise of Cloud Native SIG members would be essential if you want to deliver on that. So it's a kind of uh, joint project uh, between two SIGs. And yeah, hopefully we will have contributors for that uh, even during the next week. We have UI UX Hackathon and this project is proposed there. And what else? And yeah, we also have uh, plugin projects. So, for example, Marky, who is on the call, he's a maintainer of a Kubernetes plugin or Prometheus plugin. Uh, and uh, these plugins naturally match the six scope. And yeah, Marky, what do you think about uh, covering these topics, uh, topic periodically at the SIG meetings? Yeah, I would love to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, exact uh, list of plugins is yet to be seen, but I think that uh, this area would be really interesting uh, for potential Jenkins users. And uh, we can also see how we could collaborate because for example, yeah, there is Jenkins Kubernetes separator, it uses Kubernetes plugin. So probably we could find a lot of collaboration opportunities there. I'll skip JCask for now because it's a subject for longer discussions. Um, and yeah, so we have 20 minutes left. Uh, so should we just switch to the Jenkins Kubernetes operator? Or would you like to discuss the logo? Because we don't have one. Yeah, so uh, yeah, right now what we have is this uh, fancy icon. It looks especially fancy when you zoom in uh, or when you post it in Twitter because it's something like 128 pixels. So my proposal was to actually reuse existing artwork and uh, the best matching thing is this uh, logo. So I would suggest something like that, but if you have ideas what it could be, uh, yeah, I'm happy to discuss them and probably uh, to put something else. Just think about that. Uh, my plan is to actually start a mailing list uh, thread uh, about updating uh, it. Uh, so yeah, if you have any ideas, uh, please uh, share them uh, in this thread. Okay. And then, yeah. Sorry for all these uh, detours. And I think now we can actually switch to the Jenkins Kubernetes operator. Uh, so last week we had a presentation by Tomasz. Uh, uh, all materials are already published, so you can find it, for example, well, if uh, the comments ever load. So here you can uh, find a video recording. This, uh, this presentation and demo by, by Tomasz. And yeah, just a second, I started getting audio. Also, you can find slides, etc. And uh, one of the topics we discussed with Tomas is what uh, would be the opportunities for the SIG to help and how we can generally help the project to move forward. Because right now it's a part of the roadmap. Uh, there is uh, an old Jenkins enhancement proposal, uh, which documents what uh, would be implemented and what needs to be implemented. Uh, and I think it's a good opportunity to discuss a uh, way we could help in order to move this proposal forward and to finally get it finished and maybe to switch to next iterations and to help in other projects. So, Tomas, would you like to inter uh, quickly uh, talk about the current status and what uh, challenges you hit? 
Yes, okay. So the current status for the Jenkins Kubernetes operator that uh, we managed to run the Jenkins on top of Kubernetes with a bunch of uh, Jenkins plugins, uh, for example, Kubernetes plugin or Kubernetes uh, secrets uh, plugins, um, which uh, nicely integrate the Kubernetes itself. Um, so we use the operator pattern for that. Um, we have um, some uh, issues with, with the Jenkins itself. So the, um, in my opinion, the, the, the most important thing that uh, the Jenkins is application, I would say, um, stateful. So we have to care about the state. Uh, so with the current Jenkins architecture, we have to um, making uh, backup of some files from the Jenkins uh, home directory. And we have to know about the uh, really deep internals, what, uh, what for example, the, the, that file uh, do, or we, have to keep that or just we can um, skip, we don't know. So this um, proposal for the uh, plug, uh, plug able uh, storage is very um, interesting for us because we can move a storage or state to uh, another place and uh, make the uh, Jenkins provision by the operator be uh, stateless and we can uh, run multiple instances of it and also make the uh, uh, high available uh, because with current architecture there is can be one Jenkins master and we can um, spin uh, another Jenkins master without uh, tearing down the previous one. So this is the most important, I, I would think. Um, the another issue is that uh, the installing plugins is um, can be um, um, can be improved. So um, there is a download center, which only um, have information that okay, you have Jenkins with version X and you can um, install those plugins, but there is uh, no such thing like uh, dependency tree or mm, in my opinion, uh, uh, we, are, we need some, another uh, API for the plugins. So um, to give you some use case. So, from the operator perspective, I want to know if the user wants this plugin uh, in this Jenkins and after um, uh, making some API calls, I can verify that uh, this plugin won't be installed for the Jenkins and I want to inform user that, sorry, it's not possible because something like so it, there is no dependency or, or it's not supported in your ver version. And we face a lot of issues related to that. For example, uh, user um, put the uh, plugin list that want to install on the Jenkins. The operator uh, uh, tried to do download all these plugins. So it's on, on the directory. But after running the Jenkins, the Jenkins would say, I can run these plugins because mm -hmm. I have some kind of dependency. So when I, we have this some kind of API, uh, I think that we, it should be something totally different. Uh, it will be very um, user friendly because we have information that uh, user, uh, this plugin won't be installed in, in this Jenkins. So the uh, the state, uh, the plugins, um, uh, we uh, uh, 
I would say, a very heavy user of the Kubernetes plugin. So uh, I, 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 I can speak that uh, this plugin uh, involve uh, very well. So yeah, um, there is a lot of um, uh, diagnos diagnostic logs there. So the user uh, have um, more information what's going on because in Kubernetes, uh, um, there can be a lot of issues related to um, some volumes can be mount or basically it doesn't exist. So uh, that this information is it's now available on the log. So, so, so that's fine. So it's, it's um, uh, you, you don't have an, another person expertise. So you have only the logs, so uh, you will be free. Uh, you have more free from uh, supporting uh, running Jenkins on top of Kubernetes. Um, yeah, and I think that those, that those two things is most important for me. Yeah. So the, if you don't mind, I'll uh, start from installing plugins because yeah, you're totally right. Uh, there is no API right now for dependencies. And my question to you was uh, whether you need the API or whether you need um, tools like, for example, CLI tool. Uh, does it make a difference for you? Because, for example, we have a project called Plugin Installation Manager tool. And basically, this is a new advanced uh, um, a tool which uh, supports basically manager and plugins and it already includes some features which are not available for example in uh, plugin management scripts within docker like view updates view security updates and technically we could uh, integrate dependency tracing here as well uh, um, yes I, I i i saw this project so um it's um for sure better that uh, using the uh, install hyphen plugins.sh from the Jenkins Docker image, uh, mm -hmm. but still, uh, still um, uh, for example, in some use cases, uh, uh, this tool have to download the plugin first, unpack this and read the dependencies from there. If we have API for, for that, will be very uh, um, the servers which uh, hold the plugins uh, will be uh, more relaxed. So yeah, if, if yeah. even uh, Jenkins self uh, will uh, benefit from from this kind of uh, new API. Yeah, so right now we have a, a special plugin site, plugins Jenkins IO. And actually, this site has two parts uh, back end and front end. And the uh, back end part already can supply these APIs. The problem that uh, these APIs are not really documented. So, for example, what you see here, uh, these dependencies used uh, to come from the back end side. Right now, we have static site, so it's just generated on the run. Uh, but still we could expose uh, these APIs if needed. So there is a project, uh, just a second, uh, this project called uh, yeah, Plugin Site API, I guess. So yeah, again, it's totally not documented, uh, but uh, in principle it has APIs which uh, might be needed for your use cases. And you can deploy it locally. It can cache. Uh, it can cache uh, the update center file, and uh, provide uh, additional search queries if we need them in the future. So, for example, plugins and plugin endpoint. And this endpoint uh, it, it returns a lot of information, uh, but yeah, this information includes dependencies. Um, the question is, uh, this API uh, runs uh, some, uh, somewhere over the internet, uh, exposed, so I can uh, just use it, or I have to run this uh, in Docker or something like that? I guess right now you would have to run it. If needed, we could discuss creating a service for that. 
but uh, there is uh, one uh, downside of running it as a service because this plugin site API gets information from uh, Jenkins Update Center. And uh, let's assume you have a custom update center in your company, then uh, you won't be able to use the same plugin site API. Instead of that, you would uh, have to run your instance and connect to that. So in principle, having a public instance with this API would be doable, but in practice, for some cases, you would need to have a, you have, would have to run an internal instance anyway. I see. So um, yeah, that, that's interesting. So for me, uh, I will try to uh, use that and see what um, API I can get, what information, and test if that uh, will be uh, enough for for the operator, basically. Yeah. Yeah, before that, we had some discussions, for example, about having a GraphQL engine for this uh, component, etc. Later, we actually moved on because we just decided that we would rather generate a static plugin site. And yeah, if you go to this uh, service, it's uh, fully static now. It runs uh, behind CDN, so it's also extremely fast. And well, we don't regret this decision, but still, uh, the API services are there if needed. So. Technically, we could add additional functionality there. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I have a question regarding the plugins installation. Uh, so mm -hmm. right now with the operator, there is an issue about some, I mean, a user complaining about uh, every time like we will have to start uh, mm -hmm. Jenkins using the operator. Right now we will download plugins that the user would like. Uh, so in OpenShift, for example, we got to the, with the OpenShift uh, image, we got a different approach, uh, which is, I think, probably more, uh, more fits more uh, with the Kubernetes approach and the container image immutability uh, principle is like, we, we build the, the image with a set of plugins that the, that the user wants, and then this image is stored in the uh, in the container registry, the Docker registry. Uh, so every time that uh, we want to redeploy the exact same image, we just deploy this image, and we don't have to care at every deployment or every startup to re-downloading the plugin, checking the dependencies, and so on. So this one is done is done once. Uh, I wanted you to to share this uh, this you and have some feedback from uh, from the group here uh, to see if uh, this approach for downloading the plugins uh, on every startup uh, what, what is the use case behind this is it something that we would like to continue on on kubernetes um, yep. it's a subject for continuous holy war so for example personally i'm also a big fan of immutable images and uh, yeah, I'm submitting a talk to DevOps world uh, describing how to do it with Jenkins and Jenkins tools. Uh, but there is still some use cases where you might want uh, to install plugins on demand. So the first use case when you have users and uh, like in, for example, Kubernetes separator, uh, users define pipeline and define uh, which uh, plugins they need. So basically you apply as CRD and then whatever magic deploys Jenkins instance, you set the required set of plugins and execute that. So you will have to install the plugins, but assuming that you have a local update center, it can be done quickly. Another use case is to just uh, rebuilding and provisioning multiple images. So it might have a value, um, but it really depends on uh, what you want to build and um, what system you build. Okay, Re regarding the first scenario, I'm not sure to get it properly. So yeah. are, are you talking about the pipeline where we decide to install a specific plugin while we are running the pipeline or before starting the pipeline, something like that? Yeah, so imagine you as a user will be able to define uh, not only a pipeline, but also to say that uh, I need these plugins for my pipeline. And you wouldn't have to go to your Jenkins admins to, and to ask to install, for example, HTML publisher plugin or ant plugin for what it works. 
technically this use case would make sense. So dynamic installation of plugins which you need. For example, uh, we support this use case in Jenkins file runner, uh, where again, user can uh, define a list of plugins and they get installed automatically. So I don't use this mode, but it's possible. Okay, so you, probably my knowledge about Jenkins here is limited, but just, let's try to follow the HTML publisher example. Mm -hmm. Just imagine that the user, his pipeline or his configuration, he says, I want HTML publisher version 1.x and the, the Jenkins version is running already 1.a, okay? So it will, it will want to kind of upgrade the HTML publisher plugin of the running Jenkins instance. And in most of the cases that would require a Jenkins restart, right? Am I correct or? Uh... Yes, if you run on the same instance. But for example, if you use Kubernetes operator, if you follow Thomas's example about uh, high availability and provisioning instances on demand, again, you can provision your Jenkins instance with the required set of plugins so that you can execute uh, this payload. Yeah, but in this case, we just return to the same original problem. If it's just mm -hmm. about instantiating another Jenkins instance from an existing pipeline, we'll be starting a new image. And so we can just consider that this image should have it been existing before, or we can decide to create this image for subsequent restarts. I mean, if we just, in the plugin, we have multiple runs of the plugin, we will not uh, build again and over again the same image, knowing that we'll be using the same version of the, of the plugin set inside. So yeah, this is kind of uh, the inception. <laughs> I, but uh, yeah, probably as you said, it's like a long debate. Uh, yeah, probably it will come back often because we had this discussion probably in the past and some users are coming with it again. Um, okay, so let's, let's put it for further discussion also because we are probably running out, out of time and there is other topics also in the, in the yes. Um I have a, a few more questions regarding plugins. So uh, from the operator perspective, the user defined the list of plugins uh, they want to install and operator try to install that. But um, the user uh, want the exactly versions of those plugins. And I find the only way to achieve that is to install plugins before starting the Jenkins with uh, this uh, CR tool or install hyphen plugins.sh file and then run in Jenkins. Uh, when I trying to install plugins uh, directly from the Jenkins itself, it always install plugins with the latest version. And the question is why I can't specify the previous version of the plugin? when installing from the Jenkins itself? I guess it's a user experience uh, aspect which uh, could be addressed because uh, that's how our current Jenkins plugin manager works. Speaking yeah, of that. The, the, yeah, this is, really, um, um, this is a very problem for us because uh, we have to restart all the Jenkins to install plugins. But when we have opportunity to install specific version from the Jenkins API through for the Jenkins API, so operator can use that, it will be super easy for us. So with, with some kind of scenario, uh, uh, we can we um, don't need to restart our all all uh, Jenkins master and mm -hmm. just install uh, plugins on the fly. Yeah, in some cases it will work. Uh, well, you can install a new plugin dynamically. You cannot update a plugin uh, in Jenkins. Um, so in order to support that, you just need a uh, proper REST APIs or CLIs and they could be definitely added. I'm not sure whether we have support for that in the default update center, but yeah, basically it's a small matter of programming. And if you want uh, to add uh, these APIs, I think it would be totally doable. And I think this this um, um, behavior is comes from the uh, what we got we from the uh, download center. I think there is uh, only latest 
uh, plugin versions. Uh, I, I, I debugged this uh, one year ago, maybe maybe has ha, uh, has changed, but yeah, uh, I see that uh, the root cause of that is um, the latest versions in the Dublin Center. It depends on the update center, because even in uh, Jenkins, we actually have multiple update centers. So for example, if you go here, uh, here you have uh, experimental update centers, current update centers, LCS update centers, which provide different sets of plugins. And it would be totally doable uh, to have version uh, update centers and to support versions right inside these files. So yeah, you're totally right. If you go here, you can see that uh, there is just a link to whatever version, which is latest version supported by this LTS baseline. But if needed, uh, Jenkins could download another version because all versions are still available in archives. So it just needs logic to retrieve that. And uh, it's not a problem with particular version, it's rather a problem with dependencies because you would also need to resolve dependencies and most likely you would get, got in, uh, you would get into conflicts there. Um, so it's doable, but it requires some design. Yes, I see. And when I, uh, we, we've got this new API, we, mm -hmm. we, we even can check if uh, it, it will be, uh, uh, it, can, it can be installed on your Jenkins or not. So yeah. Uh, this uh, this will be uh, uh, very much more uh, user friendly for 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 Kubernetes operator users. Yeah, mm, we could uh, add these APIs, and yeah, for, if anyone wants to contribute, it's something like rocket science. Uh, so in Jenkins CI, we basically have uh, two classes: update site and uh, plugin manager. And both uh, these classes already have the APIs for different use cases. So we could just add REST API there and also include all dry run logic, etc. So for example, do... So it's definitely not a good example. Uh, but yeah, uh, all APIs are already there and we can uh, add more APIs if needed uh, for use cases. And I believe that if I did uh, this feature, for example, yeah, pre-validate configuration, it's already existing API, uh, which, uh, well, it's not uh, API, it's not client-friendly API because it's designed only for Jenkins internals, but we can expose API, which would be consumed by CLI clients if needed. And yeah, we can uh, add features there, you can parameterize the APIs, so we could implement uh, what you need. or somebody could implement. We just need to report uh, these issues and to see whether anybody would be willing to contribute uh, to this area. So, Tomas, if you would be willing to report issues for that, it would be nice so that we can uh, process them and maybe facilitate contributions around that. Um, yeah, sure. Um... Uh, how is the process for for uh, creating the issues? Is the Jira ticket or GitHub issue? Uh, Jira ticket. So Jenkins core lives in uh, Jenkins Jira, and we don't have plan to move to GitHub issues, at least in foreseeable future. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. So. Yeah, we're already running over time, see? And yeah, sorry for that. Um, so my proposal uh, for the next meeting, I plan to start another doodle so that we vote for regular meeting time. I wanted to start from something like meeting every two weeks. Um, again, we will uh, set up topics for particular meetings. So there is no need to participate if you're not interested in topic, let's say, Next time we do external fingerprint storage. Um, so everybody is welcome uh, to participate. And then uh, in two weeks, we will do Jenkins file runner or Jenkins Kubernetes operator again. So that we will keep running these meetings and uh, inviting uh, uh, contributors who are interested in particular agenda. Mm -hmm. Does it sound good to you? 
Okay, then uh, I will just get it implemented. So yeah, thanks to everybody for your time. And uh, yeah, I will publish uh, the recording of this meeting. And if you have any feedback about what topics you would like uh, to consider, just put them in the agenda document. So there, what uh, I will do. Uh, so I will just put a section for next meeting. So if you want to discuss something, uh, we just you can just propose a, a change there, and we will coordinate uh, what we discuss there. So for example. External fingerprint storage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, that's it for today. And thanks a lot to Tomas for sharing the feedback. Uh, because, yeah, I knew about um, uh, the pluggable storage story, I didn't know about the uh, plugin manager uh, aspects. But it's great to have uh, such insights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks all. Thank you, Thank you. guys. See you. Bye. 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 See you Bye. next time. Bye.